Luke. Okay. Let me know if y'all can see me on Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hello, everybody. Good evening, good evening. If I look tired and worn out, there's a story behind that. So come on in. Come on in, everyone. Come on in. Come on in. Say hello. Say hello. It's been, oh. Excuse me. It's been a day. Good evening. D I Q me. Good evening. Good evening. Kelly. Oh, hola. Hello. Hola. Hola. Simply Paul 89. Good evening, everybody. It's allowed. Thank you. Well, listen, I'm the preacher son. I hope you hello, Miss Wanola. You had me going today on your case. Uh, I'll, I'll send you an email later on or over the weekend. But y'all, if my screen looks different on YouTube and Facebook, <laughs> there's a story behind it. But when I tell you that God always gives you, good evening, good evening. How you doing, Miss Wanyola? If, if I tell you that God always gives you Jado pumping, that's different from BJ pumping, right? Grace qualified. I'm going to steal your username. Don't sue me now. Don't sue me for, <laughs> don't sue me for copyright. But when I tell you guys that God, has, God always leaves, there's always something, no matter what happens, where he gives you a reason to be thankful. I ain't kidding you. So, like I said, my screen may be completely different on, on YouTube and Facebook. By the way, this is attorney Apisola Atipola Mumbabasam. Ekale Shalafianoa. Immigration lawyer based in Alabama, representing immigration clients in all 50 states. Got an immigration case. My from hand is I can staff. We can and do represent immigration clients regardless of the state you live in. See, I can never get over this though. On Instagram. My left hand looks like it's on my left hand, on my right hand. But then Facebook and YouTube, it looks like it's on my... Listen, anyway, listen. Oh, thank you. I am preacher, son. You see that you just made my day. Let me tell you guys what the last 24 hours has been like. <laughs> okay, I'm going to break my watch. I don't need to break anything else. So, my... Brand new computer, 17 inch, you know, top of the line laptop is done. Gone, damaged. Yeah, four months old. But I ain't gonna heal and sell it. I ain't gonna worry about that. You know why? Because 24 hours ago, I was completely sure that I had lost all the files on my computer. And when I tell you all the files on my computer, basically my whole practice, I was very sure that I had lost the whole, my whole practice, the whole, all the files. Cause I said, when you, you all have heard me say so many times that, thank you. My laptop is my law firm, mobile law firm. I ain't kidding you. Long story short, Go back from court yesterday. My laptop was run over. Um, completely, the screen is completely gone. It's not. Anyway, so yes, and so it's like I just could not. I just kept saying, "Oh my gosh!" Oh, I literally was having. I think I was having a panic panic attack because I've been procrastinating back uh, 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 backing up my laptop. Like, y'all have no idea how crazy busy my schedule is. And then I've got two kids. I'm a full-time mom and a full-time lawyer. A full-time mom. And a full I don't listen. I got. So I'm always procrastinating. Like, okay, I'll get it done. I'll get it done. I would, you know, back up, yada, yada, yada. Didn't get it done. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. You're, thank you. Didn't get it done. Then laptop was crashed and gone. So Chris took it to Best Buy. 
And I'm telling you guys, can y'all see me good on Facebook and Instagram on YouTube? Hey, Miss Pam at Cali. I look excited. You, I'll tell you why I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you why I'm excited. Just listen on. But can you see me okay on on YouTube and, and Facebook? Anyway, Chris, look at the Best Buy. Best Buy says they cannot recover the file. All files are gone. Y'all, I, I think I, when you, I, 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 it was like an out of body experience. Um, they said the files are gone. They broke it down completely and they were going to send it to New York to get it fixed. But something just said, not something, that God sends his, he, he, he's, what, <laughs> obedience is good. And I said, listen, I, I, I don't think I'm, I have had even three hours of sleep. I'm not kidding because I could not sleep. Like, do you understand that I do immigration, criminal defense, and family law? Do you understand that every single thing is in my laptop? Yeah, we use Dropbox storage and all that, but it's not like, you know, what. there's some things I just can't put in Dropbox, you know, firm. Anyway, everything was gone. And I'm like, um, so if, if, if you're waiting on a call or email response, Listen, the last 24 hours, I've ju I'm just getting to, so, so bear with me. But the, the whole point is, there's always something to be, to you, you something to give God praise back for. Anyway, woke up this morning. I had a strong urge to post on Facebook saying, is there anyone in the area who knows about data recovery? Uh, if anybody knows, please let them know this is urgent. I just need help. Um, that's why I was like, can't help you. Um, we're going to send it off to New York. I'm like, no, 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 no. Put my computer back. Bring it. To, just let me have it. So someone said, hello, Miss Geraldine. Someone said, someone replied and said, you know, contact this guy. His name is Michael Wilson. And if he's watching or anyone who knows him in Demopolis, but Michael. Anyway. He said, just bring it to me. I can't guarantee you anything, but I'm going to take a look at it and we'll see what can be done. Long story short, people, the laptop is gone. There's nothing I can do about that. I got to buy a new one. But I said this morning, I was driving to work. I said, God, I don't know how you're going to do it. You know how hard I work. <laughs> you know that those files are my life because they're my client's lives. I don't know how you're going to do it, God, but if I've never needed a miracle from you, today's the day that I need one. When I tell y'all that I have all my files back, all my files back, the computer's gone. But God gave me all my files back. Until the day I die, until the day I die. If, if, I, this, if at the end of this journey, there's no God, that's fine. But at least I would know that I never gave up believing that there is, I don't know, I don't care what you believe, but there is a God. Mm. Listen, Nelson, <laughs> my 11 year old says, Mama, I think now, now you know that you can't be two bees and not to back up yourself. Anyway, I got my, let's just say, um, if that ever happens again, the files will be a problem. Procrastination is not, and I'm not one. I'm never one. Like I'm the kind of person people who, people around me, people who know me, say she's an instant gratification kind of person. Like I don't procrastinate. If I'm gonna do something, we gotta get it done right now. But well, somehow, I just was putting up like, okay, in March I was like, okay, yeah, I do it. Always oh, it's two weeks now. It's like, it was just I went that one day stupid, but yeah, it was just not the wisest choice. But, um. So I, I was nervous wreck up until when Michael called me and says, I got your files. <laughs> it was like, oh my God. I literally was out with a friend and I, I was just like hollering. And everyone was like, what the hell is going on? Like, that's what like, y'all don't understand. But at the end of it, what the lesson learned, but I thank him. I thank God. I thank God. Oh, you guys don't understand. Ah. Oh. My son came in last night to my own office and he says, I've never seen you look so sad. But anyway, 
I thank God. God of a second chance. And now I've told myself, God is telling me, you're like, listen, daughter of mine, I gave you yet another chance. If you decide to be stupid again, <laughs> that's going to be at you. But I thank him. So that is my, that's my, that's why I'm looking. So I'm tired because I haven't slept well, um, but I'm looking forward to sleeping. But I just wanted to come on real quick, people. Let's talk immigration. Let's talk immigration. Let's talk immigration. Once again, this is attorney Abisola. Adipola Olalei Omobaba Sam, immigration lawyer. If you need to contact our office, number is 334-341-4475. You can also visit our website at olaleilawfirm.com. So if you are seeing a different kind of screen or whatever, showing up on Facebook and YouTube, I had to bring out my surface that the surprise it came on. <laughs> so, so that's, yeah, just deal with it today. But, um, like our page on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share and follow us on TikTok. Hallelujah, Meiji. I tell you, go and listen, please. I I just know that because y'all, I work too hard. I'm up the other day. Uh, I sent out an I one thirty is up to one a.m. I work too hard, but I should know better. I work too hard to know not to, that I need to back up my every other day because of the sensitivity and everything. But uh, it, 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 listen, let's just leave Best Buy alone because they they're supposed to have some geek squad in there. Four people can figure out and say, "Oh, we, there's nothing we can do." But then that's when God steps in. Mm, 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 mm. But anyway. So let's talk immigration. If we can help you, contact our office, 334-341-4475. Visit our website at Um, I'm looking at my screen. I look so tired because I, I am, but bear with me. So I may not stay so long tonight, but let's just get right to it. Okay, let's talk about remarriage and filing for a new spouse. Subscribe to YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Um, follow us on um. TikTok, like and share on Facebook. If you know who anyone who, because a lot of people, I can't tell you how many people contact me on a daily basis, DM on a website, email saying, listen, I, I've never you know, paid for consultation with you, but I, I watch all your videos and I finally found a video you did that actually talks about my case and you just helped me without knowing you helped me. That's why I do this. So share, please, because it really, really helps people more than you know. All right. So if you're on YouTube and Facebook, you can see the topic. It is remarried and filing for a new spouse. Remarried and filing for a new spouse. When can you remarry? And how soon can you remarry? And if you got your green card or citizenship um, from a previous marriage, can you immediately file for a new spouse? Can you? Can you not? The consequences to that? Do you have higher scrutiny? What? You know, what can you do? So I've had quite a number of consultations on this topic. So I said, you know what? Let me just do a video on it once and for all, so that, Amen, Omodo official, Amen. God knows my heart. That ugh, I don't even know how I got to work this morning. To be honest with you. I, I, I literally was driving and I, 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 my mind was not, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so whenever you get married or you get your status through a marriage, you marry a green card holder or you marry a citizen, you already know you've got to prove good faith that it's a bona fide marriage. It wasn't just entered into for immigration purposes. Now, Y'all African people, yo, let's talk, let's talk. Many of us are married back home. Then we get to the United States, right? And those marriages don't work out. But really, it's not because we want to get, you know, thank you. God bless child one. Um, but we're from a we're from a culture, especially West Africa and general Africa and Caribbeans too. Uh, we're from a culture where you don't get divorced. So 
when things are so bad in the marriage, you're expected to just stay in till Jesus comes back. But then you get to the United States and you're like, you know, uh, there's no part in the Bible that says I got to stay in the miserable marriage. This ain't working now, so let's just go out separate ways. But then again, you find yourself, you know, reconnecting, especially if you have children together. And you're like, okay, what did you, it didn't work out the first time. Let's see if we can try it out the second time and see if it works out this time around, right? Okay. And then you want to get remarried. Well, one of you has papers and the other doesn't have papers now. Question then is, and because that's the very, very common scenario that I see. Question then is, so now a wife or the husband has a green card. They got that green card from a marriage to a citizen, the green card over themselves. But now they're divorced from that previous spouse, right? The question then is, are you now able to file for either your previous spouse or you get married and it's a new spouse and then file a petition on your behalf? Generally, the law is that you cannot get married and no, you can get married, but you cannot file a petition for a new spouse if you got your green card citizenship from a previous marriage within five years of you getting a, your green card um, status. Let me say that again. Basically, you cannot you cannot um, file for someone when you just no. Mm -mm. I'll get to the questions later on. So you cannot file a petition. That is, this is a general law. You cannot file a petition. You who just got your green card from a previous marriage. And that green card, it has it's it's less than five years since you got the green card, or even if you're a citizen now, but it's less than five years since you became a legal permanent resident, right? Generally, you cannot remarry and then file. So you can remarry, but you cannot file a petition within five years since you became a legal permanent resident. However, as we already know, there's always an exception to every rule. The exceptions are two exceptions. Number one. If you can prove that your own marriage, not the new marriage now, your marriage from to your previous spouse, the marriage that you were in that got you your legal permanent resident status, if you prove that that marriage was a bona fide marriage, it wasn't just to get a green card, then you can proceed with filing a petition for a new spouse. Basically, what, the, what in a nutshell, what does that mean? It means not only are you going to prove that your new, your new marriage, that now you have filed a petition for your spouse, is real, you also have to prove that the marriage that gave you your green card was real. I didn't make the law. <laughs> That's what immigration says. Second exception is unless the spouse... Through, through who you got your green card has passed. So either you can prove good faith from the marriage you got the green card from, or you can show that your spouse is now deceased and you can marry and file a petition for a new spouse, even if it's less than five years. Example, you and your ex-wife had two children, right? You both come from Nigeria, which is my country. I can I gotta use Nigeria, right? You come to the United States, things don't work out. You go your separate ways. Each of you marry other people, you know, you're caring with life, you're co-parents, you know, but you know, life goes on. Five years passes along, and then each of you now are divorced from your second marriages. But one of you doesn't have papers yet. Say, for instance, the husband never filed or things didn't work out in his second marriage and then they break up. Wife is now a legal permanent resident. She's been a legal permanent resident for the last two years or two and a half years. Let's, let's say that. Now they have reconnected because they keep, you know, they're co-parenting and they feel, you know what, we never really tried at this marriage. Let's give you another shot. They decide to come back together 
And now wife wants to uh, remarry. Wife now wants to file immigration petition on behalf of husband. Now I'll get to the point of the issue with being a green card holder. But let's just use that example. If wife now goes ahead to file a petition because wife has only been a green card holder for two and a half years, generally she's going to be barred from doing that unless she can prove that the marriage she had, which was the second marriage she had, through which she got her green card, was a bona fide marriage. So basically everything she used to prove that it was a real marriage to start with, she has to now make the same, uh, she has to meet the same burden, showing that in addition to showing that her current marriage to her first husband is also a bona fide marriage. I know probably confused everybody. But I, that, I get that question almost every day. And it's important to know because people do, people file the petitions. Then USCI sends them a notice of intent to deny saying, you haven't been a permanent resident for five years or you haven't been, but you're a citizen now, but you've only been a permanent resident for five, for three years and you got your citizenship through your ex-spouse. You're not divorced from them and now you're filing for someone new. Um, you're not allowed to unless you can prove that your marriage by which you became a citizen was a real marriage in addition to proving. So there's a higher scrutiny when it comes to filing a petition based uh, as a uh, as a green card or a citizen. If you got your own status from a previous marriage and you're filing that petition less than five years, that's that in a nutshell. Now, let's move forward a little bit. If you are a green card holder, understand something. If you file a petition for your spouse, a new spouse who is not in any status, keep in mind that that spouse cannot adjust status in the United States unless it's a spouse that is in a valid status at the time that you file the petition. So if you got your green card through a previous marriage, you're, you know, you're, you're three years in, you get married to someone who does not have you, they've overstayed their visa. Not only do you have to face the issue of filing the petition less than five years since you became a legal permanent resident, but you also have to understand that your new spouse, because they have overstayed their visa, you're able to file just the petition and you have to still have to overcome basically two good faith um, evidence proof two times over. But even if the, the petition gets approved, they will not be able to get their green card in the country because they have overstayed and you're not a citizen that would admit them an immediate relative. So basically they will have to get a waiver and leave the country to adjust status or get, get immigrant uh, visa at the embassy slash consulate. So that's that in a nutshell, people. So before you remarry, and you tell me, before you remarry, be, be sure you understand what the consequences are going to be. So, Baba Femi, Keto Fe Ya Femi Pada. Understand what the consequences may be. What's my advice? If you can wait five years, why not? Just wait the whole done five years. All right, people, let's see. Questions, questions, questions. Let me see. Miss Pam, congratulations. I know the feeling God is always faithful. God is always faithful, people. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I was a complete mess yesterday and slash this morning. Like, I was not in the mood to talk to anybody. I was not, yeah, very, very, yeah. Because <laughs> I thought it was smart freaking mind. But then I was like, okay. All right, everybody, she's back to normal. But yes, Miss Pam, um, he remains faithful. I, I still feel like I'm sitting here and like I can't even believe. You know how you all of a sudden things work out in a miraculous way, and then you you're feeling your whole body like you now you feel like you've just been stressed out and then you feel so tired from being happy. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's the feeling. Uh, but thank you, Miss Pam. 
Um, Jose, Jose J, good evening. Would you please talk about traveling with advanced parole and risk of triggering unlawful presence? Okay. In a nutshell, if you, there's no, you, if you have a pending case, um, you're not in removal proceedings and you have a pending case, you must, must, and you, you're, if you're eligible, because the fact that you have, for instance, if you have a pending bail petition by itself or a, a pending I-130 by itself, you cannot file an advance parole based on that. Um, You've got to have an adjustment of status and then file your advance parole so that you, you, you want, and then you cannot leave until it's approved. Please hear me loud and clear, people. When you're filing an I-131 application, the fact that you filed it does not, get, does not give you, um, it doesn't give you the authorization to leave the country because you have a pending advance parole. It's got to be approved because you may think, okay, everybody should know that, but no, there's someone who actually is stuck in Mexico because that's what happened. It has to be approved. You've got it in your hand because that's what that's your ticket for coming back into the country. I don't, the whole point of advanced parole, especially with someone who has accrued unlawful presence, is so you can come back in. So that's why you get that. If you're in a legal non-immigrant status, then there's no, there's no, um, I wouldn't say there's no risk in using that and coming back in because here's, here's the thing. Not all kinds of non-immigrant visas will allow you to go out while you have a pending application for to adjust status and come back in without non-immigrant status without abandoning your application. One of such non-immigrant status uh, visas that allows you to go out of the country, come back into the country with that non-immigrant visa and without an advance parole is, an example, is an H-1B visa. H-1B visa is a dual intent visa. So even if you are, or you have an, a pending application to adjust status and you have a valid H-1B visa, that is still, you know, it's still valid. You can come back in with it. You travel and you come back in, you're not going to be deemed to have abandoned your your application uh, to adjust status if you have a valid H-1B visa. I love H-1B visas. I'm telling you, we sent two applications out, petitions out today. It's it's just one of those visas that it's like, um, it's, it's like a double blessing kind of thing. You can have green card pending, but still go in and out as you, as you please in an H-1B visa. So, but it's, there's no, yeah. Can you talk about remarriage and filing for a new says based on receiving your green card based on VAWA? Um, there is no, you still have to prove good faith. Let's just put it that way. You still have to prove good faith. However, because VAWA has a lot of exceptions, because you must have proven exemptions, you must have been able to prove the good faith before you got your VAWA approved. The main thing about VAWA is just this. You cannot, you can't get married after your petition has been approved. You cannot get remarried before your petition has been approved. You can get married after your petition has been approved, even if your green card application is not approved yet, it, 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 it doesn't do anything. The main issue is just not getting married while your VAWA petition is still pending. Okay, let me go to Instagram. Zach JK, how is a guarantee that the immigrant visa will be given guarantee? U.S. U.S. Immigration Department of State or Department of Homeland Security doesn't guarantee you any right to get a uh, immigrant visa or just status. It's a privilege. That's just the way it is. That's the law. There's no guarantee or right to green card or, or getting an immigrant visa. Thank you for for. for being real always. Please, could you talk an hour for 
That's very, very broad. What RIP for uh, NIW, uh, what is the RIP for? It just depends on what the RIP is for. If the RIP is on, usually the RIP is um, mainly on being able to establish your three prongs in, in the matter of the Nassar um, case law. And just, they will give you examples of what you can send in to prove your case. So I always say look for things that would help to, they give you guidelines. So those guidelines helps you to know what you can send in response to your RFP. And when in doubt, just consult with an immigration lawyer to help you. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. D, okay. How much do you charge for that? I don't have a set fee. Everybody's case is different. So that fees are discussed in the proper paid consultation. That's how I can tell you. What if you... What if you uh, got there? If it's abuse based, yes. Miss Wanwilla. How do I get, so this is Teasel, how do I get USCIS to respond to me after I've already passed the test, but it's been eight months? What did they tell you happened? There's got to be a reason why they have not, because for the most part, majority of field offices, once you pass the citizenship test, unless there is some background check that is not complete, they're trying to verify a document you, you produced. For the most part, some of them are actually offering same day old ceremonies. So there's got to be more to your story, Teasel, that you, you may want to talk about, you know, privately. If I married my husband and he has been... You were citizen over 10 years, but he filed for someone three years ago. Can he file for me or we have to wait? No, he doesn't have because he's he's been a citizen over 10 years. So it that that means he did not get his um green card within the last five years if he's already a citizen for the last 10 years. So it's that that doesn't apply to him. However, obviously, you guys still would have to um show good faith. It doesn't mean that they won't factor in the fact that he just filed for someone three years ago. That doesn't mean he's not going to be factored in. That most likely probably would be a factor for USCIS to consider as far as good fit in your own marriage, but not in his own marriage. Proudly, I read someone to you and he said he called and booked an appointment with you today from Atlanta. Um... He's probably, can you tell him that he's, I don't think he has booked his appointment. If he's the one, what is his last name? If he's the one, I mean, his last, his, his last name, if it's what I'm thinking of, it's probably very common. But there was someone we had emailed twice already, because, you know, like I said, I was dealing with laptop issues. So they emailed twice already to, to uh, actually book his appointment so we see that he has someone has paid but they have not actually scheduled the actual appointment at, and i think he's an, someone who lives in atlanta so if you'll please have him and thank you for the referral i really really do appreciate it if you have him go ahead and book his appointment um and if he needs the link he, he, tell him to check his email because i think i used my phone and i sent him a link as well so he needs to do that before 12 midnight because by 12 midnight, he would not see any scare, anything left for today at all. Um, not, not today, for tomorrow. I have nothing that's left today. So tell him to go ahead and check his email. How long are K-1 visas taking to process? Um... The last one we got an approval on to, I want to say nine months. But y'all, listen, I think starting in May, I truly believe that we're going to be seeing um, much, much faster processing of applications and petitions. Now, do not run with this. 
well, we got four um, work permits today. Um, one was a case we filed, and it's not a bag, it's an AOS case, a marriage base, um, filed in January, three months ago. I actually have the car. I don't have the approval notice be besides the email notification, but um, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but when I called my client, he goes, um, you're kidding, right? Like, no, I wish that I took a picture of the, he says, no, don't just don't send me a picture of the envelope, open it and send me the picture that has my face on it. And he goes, oh, Miss O, he calls me Miss O, what did you do? Like, I, I ain't going to take credit for nothing. I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't an expedited request, nothing. Just regular filing, approved three months. One of the other three was filed in July last year. Yeah. Um, that's a valid case, but I think a lot has to do with the trust in the uh, the um trust and service center. I, I don't know, but I just believe that starting in May, I think. And I say that to say this, I think it is indication of what we can expect to see. So I'm hoping it's not like they're getting new cases and then pressing those real quick and sending them back out. And then the other ones that have been in for that long, not going to get much longer because they're trying to get the new cases out as soon as they come in. I don't know. We're yet to see. We'll just we'll wait and see what happens. Um, because May is when they said they're going to be getting into that. Okay. And Jane, thank you. You're welcome, S1991. Um Pending 45, no based on vow, what's likely to be the next step? They will let you know if they're going to schedule you for an interview or not. Um, Celia, good night. You're saying if you have advanced for a travel document, it's not safe to leave unless my back. Celia, you know, that's what you did on Tuesday. You said something else that I did not say. <laughs> um, I think you lost me a little bit on Instagram. That's not what I said. What I said is, listen now, Celia, it is not and your vow. A case does not have to be approved for you to get advanced parole document. What I'm saying is you cannot leave the country unless your advanced parole application has been approved and you have it in your hand, whether it, it's a combo card with your EAD or the notice to send you with approval. Make sure you have it in your hand before you leave the country. That's what I said. That's what I said. Okay. All right, people. I think, um, let me see. I, I skipped a lot of questions. So unlawfully, Ms. Warner, this is unlawfully a lot of people who just filed this year are getting faster response than those who filed last year. Yes. That's no lie. That's why I'm just really hoping that, um, uh, we filed, there's another case that we filed late last year. I want to say November. And we have an interview scheduled for next one. I, I, I don't know. I'm just hoping that they're not. It's good for those who are just filing. I mean, I would take a, th a three month period of approval work permit. But I also have people that we found since February last year. They're working on cases received in March, I want to say. So obviously, that's way past the, the, the priority date. You know, that case, that particular case is way out to normal present time. Um, but they keep telling me, anyway. So I, I, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll, we'll see. Super stale. If my VOP application is pending and my spouse calls ICE on me, can they arrest me? 
I, I can't tell you whether or not they can arrest you, but if you have um, proof of your filing, I always tell people, I don't care where it is you're going. If you're going to a grocery store, please make sure you have, everybody's got a smartphone. Make sure you have a screen, a photo of your receipt notices with you all the time. Now, let me say this. The fact that you have a pending case does not mean you cannot be placed in removal proceedings. Example will be if you're arrested for like shoplifting, not shoplifting, but arrested for like robbery or something. The fact that you have a pending case doesn't stop it from because you know, anything that's, that can make you deportable. But generally... In your case, Superstat One, uh, because ICE, because USCIS, DHS, generally, they understand that a lot of people who file for VAP, spouses are very vindictive. They want to make the, the, part of the abuse is they want to get the, the victim deported. They are very aware of that. As long as you have your receipt notices, you explain what's going on. That that's part of obviously that will be part of why you file for VAP. You should be fine unless you do something else on your own. But I don't see any reason why they should. Because um, they know, they, listen, I have a case where the, the husband actually sent a letter to the Vermont Service Center. But it was sent, and the copy of it was directed to my office. So you got to give it to USA because sometimes they're looking out for, they, you know, they do what they're supposed to do. You're welcome. Um, so... But just make sure you have your receipt notices. Like, you know, I have my driver's license, I have my insurance card on my phone because some I don't always have, you know, like if sometimes I want to write something or I want to apply for something and I'm here and I don't want to get up being lazy and, and look at my person like, oh, where's my driver's license? I just look at my phone like, okay, there it is. And just, just there's some things you should have with you all the time. If you're not, if you don't have your green card yet, just the same way they tell you you have to have your green card on you all the time. The same way I tell people have your receipt notices with you all the time. Uh, and talking about receipt notices, there's some that I have with me. So if you haven't, uh, if you're my client and you've filed, you filed your case within the last month, or well, not every case, I may have your notices sitting here, but like I said, no laptop to scan. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. But anyway, thank you everyone for joining in. I appreciate that all the time, and I hope you guys have a good weekend because I think tomorrow I'm going to sleep in. I got to, yeah, and there, uh, um, I think my files should be down, to be done, being moved. Um, hopefully, I get my laptop over the weekend because I was on delivers on Sundays too now, which is good. So, fingers crossed, I should be back running on Monday, but I count it all joy. I'm just grateful grateful that god saw it fit that my um procrastination in stupidity call me what it is see all the you can read all the book and study i, I have two I mean, law degrees from everywhere and, and be licensed and you know state don't mean you, you're smart all the time <laughs> don't mean you're smart all the time i'm one that i listen i when 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 i make some silly decisions I'm the first one telling you, like, hey, that was the dumbest thing to do. Now I know. And I thank God for giving me a second chance. Like, okay, thank you. Mike, Mike, Tito Autos, thank you. All right, people. See you guys next time. Bye bye.